the Skoda Kodiak RS. It's one of our favourite performance SUVs here at Car Sales and it's just come in for a major update. Headlining the changes is the switch from diesel power to petrol power. So has the change in strategy paid off? Let's find out. The three model Kodiak range has come in for a midlife facelift, introducing fresh technology, styling and safety. The changes have coincided with a minor pricing increase at the entry level, with the base Kodiak style opening proceedings at $48,540 and the mid-grade Sportline positioned at $53,340. The updated Kodiak RS flagship driven here is now priced at $67,440 before on-road costs. Cosmetically, the range introduces a redesigned front bumper, bonnet and grille together with a tweaked rear design including new LED tail lights. The Kodiak RS is now powered by the VW Group's ubiquitous 2-litre turbo petrol four-cylinder engine. Basically, it's the same donk already in use in the Golf GTI and other Skoda models, including the Octavia RS. Power is rated at 180 kilowatts, which is up 4 kilowatts, while torque is rated at 370 newton metres, which is 130 newton metres down on the diesel. A seven-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission is fitted standard, helping facilitate a 6.6 second 0 to 100 time, which is four tenths quicker than the diesel. As for all important fuel use, the petrol claims a 7.5 litre per 100k average on the combined cycle, up from 6.7 on the predecessor. The RS is really marketed as the burger with a lot within the Kodiak range and I have to say it really does present that way in the skin. You jump inside, you've got heated and ventilated leather seats up front, soft contact points, plenty of incidental storage and nice digital displays as well both in the instrument cluster and in the center fascia with the latest software infotainment system fitted. There is a slight last generation feel to the cabin, particularly the center fascia. It's festooned in different buttons and things, but like everything else with this car, it's clear, it's legible, and it's easy to use on the move, which is really important. All Kodiak variants are fitted with dual zone climate control, keyless entry and start, and an electric park brake. The infotainment unit is concise and easy to operate on the move. If anything, we'd love a physical volume knob to adjust audio, but that's just personal preference. The Kodiak covers all of our basic infotainment requisites with the exception of a head-up display. There's a similar outlook for safety, at least with the RS, with nine airbags and a five-star safety rating dating back to 2017. There is a safety asterisk next to more affordable style and Sportline Kodiak variants, where you have to option two different packs at a cost upwards of $6,500 to get lane assist, blind spot monitoring and rear cross traffic alert. For me, it's those little 1% of touches that really differentiate a good family car from a great one. And when you jump in the back seat of the Kodiak RS, you'll see exactly what I mean. There's little features like the door protector that comes out every time you open the door, the sun shades, and just the general fitment and amenity of the back seat. Plenty of leg room, plenty of toe room, shoulder room, rear air vents, heated seats as well. It's a really nice place to spend a lot of time in, regardless if you're a kitty or an adult. Sleep-friendly headrests are fitted standard to the flagship RS, though there's only a solitary 12-volt charging outlet in the second row. It's more good news in the 765-litre boot space, with standard fitment of two, let's call them temporary, six and seventh seats, good for the occasional passenger ride, together with quick-folding rear seat levers, a large flat floor and luggage hooks. A temporary spare tyre is stowed underneath. Okay, so Kodiak RS, the big elephant in the room here, I guess, is why is there no more diesel? Well, it's a very simple fact. Skoda doesn't make diesel anymore. They've reverted purely to petrol as they make this transition to greener technology, which of course includes electrification. You're gonna see that roll out in Australia from next year. 
but petrol. What's it like driving the Kodiak RS with a petrol for the first time? Well, I have to say it's familiar, if anything. This is the same drivetrain in the Golf GTI, in the Octavia RS, as I said, and it's a known quantity. The EA888 makes lots of power down low on the rev range. It does suffer a little bit from a bit of hesitation, a bit of lag upon taking off. That's just a symptom of the DSG transmission. But once you're up and running, it is smooth, seamless passage with plenty of power available across the dial. The petrol's performance note can be artificially augmented with some digital assistance. It won't be to everyone's taste, but crucially, you can turn it off. The Kodiak RS can't quite match the generous torque curve of the predecessor diesel, but it does a good imitation. We also found real-world fuel use was up, with the petrol averaging 9.5 litres per 100 k's on tests using the recommended 95-octane blend. So just how sporty is the Kodiak RS in petrol form? Well, I'm happy to report it does have a really nice sporty bent to it. Put your foot down, there's ample power there. I wouldn't call it explosive, but there's pleasing levels of power and performance on hand. The gearbox works really well from a performance sense. It will also push for higher gears when you want it to. And the engine is really willing. It pulls all the way to its circa 6,500 RPM cutout. Throw the Kodiak RS into a corner and it's really sure-footed and capable. I'm not gonna say it's one of those SUVs that you know, feels really solid, like a, a, an SUV from the next class up. But what you do get is something that's nimble, sure-footed, and really does you know, convey confidence to the driver as well. The other side of the coin here is that of comfort. Yes, there is a sporty premise to the controls, the ride and everything else, but it's still one of those SUVs that you, know, you can take on a country road, you can tour, you can spend long amounts of time in and come out feeling relatively refreshed. The Kodiak RS presents strongly where after sales is concerned, offered with a five-year unlimited kilometre warranty and the option of a seven-year term, should you wish. Servicing is priced at $2,000 over five years if purchased up front and includes free roadside assist. Those provisions lend peace of mind to a vehicle that feels strikingly familiar even with the fitment of a new engine. It means the Skoda Kodiak RS remains relevant, attainable and practical as ever, keeping it at the pointy end of the SUV field.